Um, I'm outside and it is a beautiful day outside today. Uh, my neighbor is actually outside cutting his grass so there might be a little bit of noise from that. But besides that, it's quiet, the birds are singing, and there's a nice breeze blowing. So I thought I would come outside and do a quick DIY. Um, so I saw in a magazine yesterday, I think it was, um, a set of three Americana pillar candle holders, I guess you would call them. Um, and I saw them and I thought, well, that shouldn't be too hard to make. So. Um, I came outside and I looked around the yard and lucky me, I have a lot of wood laying around. Um, I found a couple pieces in my garden that my kids have been playing with and just throwing around. And these were actually on the pile to be thrown away. So now I'm using them to make some Americana candle holders. Um, what I saw was made out of a 4x4. These are 2x2s. I just get them from work. And uh, I use them in a lot of landscaping stuff outside. You might want to go buy some 4x4s to make these if you want to make them. I like the fact that this wood is aged because it's been outside. And um, I kind of wanted that effect. Most of these I cleaned up already. I'm not going to show you the prep work. What I did do, and I suggest you, if you don't have one, to buy an inch and a half paddle bit. Um, I had to use a one inch paddle bit, so I have several spots on here where I had to drill in to make my countersink for my candles. I'm going to use these battery operated tea candles from Dollar Tree. So I don't really need a, a very large indention here, just something to hold my candle steady. But if you do want to use a regular tea candle like this, you probably want to make this hole deeper because you don't want to, you don't want this candle to have the opportunity to fall out and catch anything on fire. So. Um, paddle tip, wood, paint is all you really need. So the first thing we're doing here is getting our paddle tip and I recommend using an electric drill and countersinking the holes on the top of it big enough to fit your candle. Okay, for my smaller candle holder, I'm going to be using this blue. Um, I made this blue, so I can't tell you what color it is. Uh, it's kind of like a grayish blue color. I will probably never be able to remake this color, but I don't like the bright navy blue, so I wanted more of a, a grayer toned blue to do my Americana decorations this year. Um, so we're just going to paint this one a solid blue color. Okay, now I'm going to take my longest pillar and some painter's tape and about a three quarters, I don't know, a little bit over half of the way up, I'm going to tape around my block of wood and you want to make sure it's straight and I'm going to try and get mine as straight as possible and then kind of press that down because you don't want your blue paint to run and then we're going to paint this top part, part here the blue that we painted the smaller candlestick I'm out of paint in my lid. I have to move to the jar. take my tape off while it's wet because if you wait for it to dry it is probably going to pull some of your paint off with it and this is part of our largest P 
pillar. I'm going to let this dry before I do anything else with it. Okay, medium sized pillar. We are using this cream color I got from Lowe's. It is a Valspar color sample. Um, the reason that I'm using the cream is because I don't like the whites. I don't like the bright colors. I like it a duller, the older look. So instead of white, I'm using cream. And we're going to paint the whole thing cream. And then we're going to let this dry and go back and make some stripes. Also on the cream, I'm probably, I don't know, I might have to do two coats. We'll see. one to dry I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this smaller one I have these star cookie cutters that I got from Pampered Chef and I'm going to put them down on this candle or this candlestick that we're making I'm gonna open up my cream paint fingers crossed that this works because I haven't tried this yet so we'll see how it works I'm going to dab the end of my brush into my cream paint I don't want a lot of paint on there because that will cause it to run. And then we are going to dab down in the center of our star so that we can get some stars on our pillar. This one right here is not completely covered. I'm going to do my best to stay in the lines on this star and um, fill it in because the blue is showing through. And I don't want the blue to show through. So this part is just like coloring in the lines and I think I can do that. smaller pillar and we're still gonna distress it but that is what it looks like with the candle stick in the candle in it it's so pretty moving back over to our largest pillar you want to tape off the bottom of your blue paint and then paint the bottom half of this cream you're probably going to want to use two coats just to make sure you get really good coverage and there's no wood showing through. After you get done painting the cream on your largest pillar, you want to set that aside to dry and you want to move to your medium sized pillar. The paint should be dry on this by now and you're going to want to make stripes. What I did here is I taped off my stripe and then I put a kind of a spacer piece of tape in the middle of it so that my stripes were even and then I took the spacer up and I moved on to my next stripe. Once you have all your stripes laid out on your medium sized pillar you want to go ahead and put a base coat of cream over top of those. So this way when your paint decides it wants to run, because paint will usually decide it wants to run no matter how, how much tape you put on it, it's going to run the cream color rather than running the red color. So the red isn't going to mix with your cream and you're not going to have to do a lot of touch up work. Um, 
I'm using a red Valspar color sample that I got from Lowe's here. I wasn't able to find any more aged looking red, I guess you would call it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over all of these with an antiquing wax just to kind of give them the aged look. After you're done painting your red stripes, go ahead and remove your tape while the red is still wet so that it keeps your paint from chipping off when you take off your tape. Okay, now we've got two of our pillars done and you can kind of see what we're going for here. It's kind of going with the flag decoration and I think it looks really cute. So the next thing we want to do is finish off our big pillar. Okay, so back to our big pillar. We're going to use the same technique that we used on our medium sized pillar. We're just going to use tape and then a spacer and then we're going to paint our stripes. Don't forget to paint your base coat on there of your cream so that your red doesn't run and everything should be ready to go. Alright, so now you can see here I did have to do just a little bit of touch up where the blue and the red and white meets, but it wasn't too much. It was pretty easy. And then to finish off this pillar, we're just going to go ahead and put our star cookie cutter on our blue part and make our stars, and then our painting is done. Okay, to go ahead and finish everything off and give these kind of an aged look, I'm using this Rust-Oleum Antiquing Wax, and I'm just putting it on a little bit at a time, and then I'll be taking a rag and wiping it off. What it's going to do is it's going to make it kind of look like it's been sitting around for a while and I didn't just freshly paint it. And it's also going to darken up that red a little bit so that it doesn't look so bright. The last step in our aging process is going to be to distress the edges of these. I'm going to do all three of them and I'm going to let the aged wood come out just a little bit on the edges. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, if you do decide to make your own Americana candle pillars, let me know in the comments below and let me know what you're making them out of. If you decided that you liked the video and you want to see more of my DIY content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can catch my next video.